last week on Relentless. Tyler Tettleton will be our starting quarterback. It means a lot, you know, to have uh, their trust and faith in me. And me being wherever, and me catching the ball, running the ball, throwing the ball, it doesn't matter. So My knee buckled in, felt about three different pops. You have kneecap instability, cartilage damage in that knee. God, that sucks. Bad day of fishing is uh, better than a good day at work. We can't be running in place. We got to be a football team that gets better day by day, not week by week but day by day. Yeah, we got a lot of young corners in there. You know, they're doing pretty good. Yeah. You know, it's just a learning process right now. That's why this camp thing is so important and vital mm -hmm. for me because everybody's learning. Even veterans, you know, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I'm still messing up and on um, little things that I shouldn't be messing up on. But you know, if we don't, if I don't learn right now, come season time, it's gonna be a whole different story. Training camp is a learning process. And learning means lots of meetings. The Bobcats spend a lot of time in meetings. Learning, lots of videos, lots of charts, and PowerPoints. Not surprisingly, it can become a bit of a bore. Yeah, it, wears, it wears you down, you sitting there. I mean, you, it's almost worse than practice, almost. Just sitting there, you know, just soaking it all in. But I mean, it's definitely necessary to, to they beat it on you, but it's definitely, you need it. I'm not going to name any names, though, but yeah, a couple of people have fallen asleep. But in 2011, these meetings are especially important. In the spring, Ohio announced it'd be switching to a new no-huddle offense. If it works, there'll be nothing boring about lighting up Peden Stadium's scoreboard. There won't be time to nap. After every year, every season, you always want to go in and reevaluate what we can do better, uh, what gave us problems, and one of the things we, want, that we wanted to uh, emphasize this spring and of course going into fall camp is we, we want, wanted more plays per game. You know, our average per play was, was fairly high. We needed more snaps. We've gone into some exclusive, you know, go fast, play fast mentality and the guys have responded well to it. Simply put, Albin and the Cats want to go fast. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Get in line, let's go. Find a spot to ball, guys. Find out where the ball is. I got four plays, snap it. Snap it, snap it. I think it's, it's just it's so so modern. I mean, they watch the t college football today on, on TV, and it's everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it. I mean, the only there's only a couple teams that huddle up anymore. Ohio's new offense is about as modern as you can get. But while coaches can scheme all they want, ultimately it's the players who have to buy in and execute. Fortunately for the Cats, that hasn't been an issue. I've been looking forward to that since the day they brought it up in spring ball and the fact that we're still planning on using it, it's just, yeah, it's just, I get dreams just thinking about it because that's what I've been wish, wishing for, just a running gun, just throw it around and I mean, I think it's going to be completely beneficial for us. It's, uh, it's been an easy adjustment for me and I've, uh, I've really enjoyed it so far and it's going to help, it's going to benefit us a lot this year, you know, we're going to, we want to try and uh, get more plays in a game, and you know, with more plays, you know, that's, that's going to hopefully provide more uh, points on the board. While Albin coordinates the offense, he's also the head man for Ohio's stable of running backs. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. In 2011, the Cats are looking for one man to be the back. As camp progressed, senior Dante Harden stepped up to fill that role. I try to, uh, I, I just take whatever whatever opportunity presents itself, you know, if, if a guy's in my way and he, he look like he's ready to get ran over, I'm going to lower the shoulder on him. But uh, if I don't have to, if I don't have to uh, make any contact, then it's going to be as, as least contact as possible. I mean, it's, I get to the end zone easier, you know. <laughs> Harden has had flashes of brilliance, especially in big games made a name for himself as a red hot killer over the past two seasons. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, 6 for the Cats. 
While Harden may get the start on opening night in New Mexico, Ohio has several more backs who are just as explosive. Redshirt sophomore Ryan Boykin is a tall, strong target that no one can seem to bring down. Who will take the snap, hand it off to Boykin, runs behind Herman, inside the 15, down to the 10, down to the 5, he's in! Touchdown, Ohio! A big block and then a big run. Louisiana couldn't tackle him. Uh, Ryan Boykin had, had an outstanding spring, and uh, he's, he's the, the 225-pound guy, 466 electronic. And he brings a lot to the table, and he'll surprise you with his feet. While Boykin may not be the number one guy, he still has some lofty goals for the upcoming season. Oh, a thousand yards for sure. I know the linemen are going to open up the holes. I just got to find them, and uh, I'm sure Dante will find them too. And we just got to hit them when they open them up. Harden and Boykin came to Ohio straight from high school. Wild card in this running back mix chose alternative transportation to get to Athens. Bo Blankenship transferred to Ohio from Iowa State after the 2009 season. Petite yet tough, fleet footed and nimble, he runs with a purpose. And Bo Blankenship's, I think, had a great fall camp. Uh, he was, in the spring was his first time to, with the offense, but he's had a great fall camp, and uh, I'm starting to get him in the mix a little bit more. I mean, I know I'm not the tallest guy, but I, I mean, I have some power and quickness and speed, and I just, I do everything I can to get the, you know, the extra yards or to make, you know, make people miss, just and hit the hole with speed. All three of those guys can play for us. I really don't have a preference who's in the game. They do, they, they all bring something to the table. They know our offense, so I feel comfortable with any, any of the three. While competition for playing time is intense, the ground-pounding unit can agree on one thing. Everyone loves a birthday party. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty crazy. Dante's having his last birthday as a Bobcat. Bo's was the week before that, and Ryan's was Sunday. His coach wife bringing cupcakes, or she have a nice cake for us. And I usually get my personal, which is like five, and boy, can you get his personal five. My kids are come around a lot. Uh, we always do something for the guys on Friday before the bus leaves. My wife comes up, and the kids are around a lot of times. And so we kind of had something for, for Dante and Bo, and, then, and Ryan's actually going to get his tonight. So. All right, five years of Dante. Yeah. I have no hair because of this guy right here. <laughs> I have no hair yeah. in my head because of this guy right here. Five years. It was actually gone before I got here. Five years of stress, <laughs> stress. Touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, stress, some touchdowns. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good thing being out here on this football field doing something I love on my birthday. <laughs> Ain't getting you no cupcakes, Dallas. <laughs> All day, fellas. Big Herm, Sky, Lechner, Strum, let's go, baby. The backs only get to celebrate if their linemen clear some space. Finally, this unit is healthy and deep. For the first time in a long time, Ohio returns a complete offensive line. This depth, coupled with their talent, has them projected as one of the top units in the MAC. You know, last year we played a bunch of games, played in the bowl game together, had a really long season, so the camaraderie is there. And everybody knows everybody's tendencies, what they do, you know, so there's a little less feet getting stepped on in there, you know what I mean? When you're with the same people, you know what you to expect on double teams, what kind of, what you're going to get, like when you're zoning, running through, and just, I feel like everything flows better with us front five again this year than last year, because we've all spent a lot of time together. Today is a good day. Leitner is very happy right now. Oh, yeah. So that means I'm happy if Leitner's happy. Leitner is offensive line coach Kevin Leitner. He played his college ball under Frank Solich at Nebraska and knows what it takes to win the battles in the trenches. Go get it! Go get it! There you go! Go get it! There you go! Down in distance. He's all third down. Better be talking. 
Ready, go. Second. Ah, you're stepping away. You're stepping away. A lot of guys who have got a lot of playing time in this group. Uh, I've got a lot of new faces in there, too. Got a chance to show me how physical you can be. Going out. There's way too much love going on today. Way too much Dude, love. this is crazy. You're in a great right, mood. Here we go. Yeah, I... You got that three-day beard going on. I'm not able to shave it again. Or something. Yes. <laughs> All right, he he yeah. wants everything done right, especially the little things. Like, if your footwork's not right, then, you know, that's... That's not going to get it done with him, you know. He's a great coach. He knows the ins and outs of every position on the offense. You know what I mean? And when it comes to blocking, like he will, not, he'll, he won't steer you wrong. Like you know what I mean? He he played in Nebraska, played big time football. I mean, and he's always trying to get you better. There you go. <laughs> I reset my right I know, one. No, but I'm okay. talking about initial, my initial yeah. punches out here. All right, that's easy to miss, right? Because. Yeah. All right. I mean, you you got him that time. All right, but you're you're rolling the dice. He demands respect, and by God, he's earned it. He's a very smart coach. He knows what he's talking about. So that's why I tell all the young guys, all the freshmen, I'm like, just listen to Coach Lightner. He'll coach you up. He'll get you right. You know, he got me right. Well, man, I don't want you going soft on me. Huh? But I don't want you going soft on me. I take this is live, man. I know. I'm just saying. Cause I'm under I'll throw you to the ground if I can. Ready, go. I mean, you're just fresh out of high school, buddy. Right? I didn't even get better on this. Yeah? It'll come with time, my man. Right? Just keep getting coached up, watching yourself. There you go. You're a good player, man. You'll, you'll fit in well. Let's keep it up, right? A month ago, you were eating lunch with all your friends. <laughs> now you're up here, you new friends, right? You got strum here. That's all you need. <laughs>
put him through. Paul Hershey's leg is serious. Eyes on your guy. Don't look anywhere until you hear the He can use that leg to punt it over the deepest return man, or he can use both legs and hurdle defenders to get to the sticks. If they don't contain me, I'm going to take off with it as much as I can without getting the coaches too furious at me, but I don't know. Nobody really sees it coming from punter. I like to think that I have the leg to go to the next level. I need to work on my consistency, make sure I can maintain through a whole season. When the weather starts changing, I have to be able to, you know, punt in the wind, punt in the rain, punt in the snow. I have to be able to do it all year round, have a good year. Last year we were eighth in the country in net punting. I would like to increase that by a couple yards, you know, hopefully get in the top, top two or three. That'd be that'd be pretty nice for us. The other star of the unit didn't see action last fall due to injury. He was a preseason All-American returner. Levon Brazil is scary good. Brazil makes the catch of the 26. Started left, goes right through a hole 40. Near sideline 45, 50. Room to run, near side 40, 35, and he's gone. I'm punting to one of the best punt returners in the nation every day. So our punt team has to get down there and cover. And if you can if you can make a tackle on somebody like Levon, you can you can make a tackle on anybody, definitely. Then I I'll watch the punter and see how he placed the ball on his foot and how he kicked it off his foot. Now to tell me which direction to go in. I look, I'm, I look at the ball, focus on the ball. If it's too late, I make fair catch. If it's not, I field it and then look for an open scene or a good block by one of my teammates. A specialist unit being ranked top five in the country is not, it's not just Matt kicking field goals, me punting and Jeremy snapping. It's all our cover teams. It's everybody that practices against us. It's the scout team guys that give us a great look every day so our cover teams can get better. Most of training camp includes very little contact. The risk of injury is too great to justify a lot of full speed drills. But all of that changes on scrimmage day. I love scrimmages because that is a time to really put it all together. And that's the one time where the coaches are really, really looking for people to stand out. And that's your time to shine, you know, in practice. You could have a bad practice. You could have seven bad practices. You go in there and you ball out in that scrimmage. You know, that's all it takes is, you know, to get out there on game day and make it happen. Mark Smith, you're coming in at four, buddy, right? Coming in at four. While the scrimmage serves as a perfect time to catch your coach's eye, there are others in Peden Stadium many Bobcats are looking to impress. NFL scouts have become a staple at Ohio practices during the Solich era. Many of these Bobcats share the common goal of making it to the next level. I, I, I mean, I, I have aspirations of going to the NFL, yes, and of course, whenever I see the scouts out there, you know, we're going into inside run, you know, you know, the, the, uh, the tempo goes up, you know, past 11 there, so you got to sell out when they're out there, you know, you got to make yourself look good. Going to the NFL is my goal, and, you know, I, I, I really, I'm not going to stop until I get there, you know, if it's going to be a long road, a short road, I'm going to get there one way or another. It's one of the reasons why I came to play for Coach Solich. The scouts don't need a map to get to Athens anymore. Peden Stadium is already locked in their GPS for a reason. Ohio has sent several athletes to the league, and more are expected. Taylor Price, Mike Mitchell, Thad Turner, Mark Parson, Landon Cohen, uh, Steve Goulet, Julian Posey, Terrence McRae, Stafford Gatlin. Um, it's, it's a lot of guys since I've been here, and it just, it just keeps me eager, humble, and hungry to, to get there, too. Let's play good, aggressive, hard-nosed uh, football, okay? In training camp, the defense is usually ahead of the offense. Ohio's second scrimmage proved no different. However, there were several big play flashes. 
Hey, this is money right here. doesn't always have to get to the goal line to get points. I want a 57-yard field goal. Jeremy, can you figure that out? Jeremy, you got it? Very good. 57 plus 10 is 57. Nice job. Now, should we run the kickers and the holders is what I want to know. You guys, huh? On that one. Come on up, come on up. Coach has got to run a gas there. Not so fast. <laughs> Another week to learn. Another week to play faster. Another week to work out the kinks. Another week to dream big. Another week to be relentless.